Okay, a quick video here to just go through at lightning speed um, question five from the MYP2 book. That's uh, page 197, chapter nine equations. I'm just going to run through these at lightning speed. Um, apologies if you hear Peppa Pig in the background, my four year old daughter. Um, okay, so number one, 7x minus 3 equals 18. Um, I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get closer to the bit with x in, so 7x equals 21. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 7, get what a single x is. Um, so dividing both sides by 7, x equals 3. So just trying to be consistent about whatever you do to one side, you have to do exactly the same to the other side. Question B says x over 2 minus 1 equals 4. So I want to get closer to the, to the, the bit with um, x in, so I'd like to get rid of the minus 1. So if I get rid of the minus 1, what I'm doing is adding 1 to cancel it out, but then I've got to add 1 the other side as well. So adding 1 to both sides, x over 2 equals 5. But I don't want to know what x divided by 2 is. I want to know what a whole x is. So I need to multiply everything by 2 to get a whole x. So multiplying both sides by 2, x equals 10. OK, the next question. Question C. 2 brackets x plus 5 equals 20. So that's saying 2 times everything in that bracket is equal to 20. So if I want to get that bracket on its own, x plus 5 on its own, I need to divide it by 2. But because an equation is like a balance, I need to do the same the other side as well. So dividing both sides by 2, x plus 5 equals 10. Those brackets really don't need to be there anymore because they're not doing anything. There's nothing in front of them. Um, so x plus 5 equals 10. I don't want to know what x plus 5 is. I just want to know what x is on its own. So I take away 5 from both sides to get x equals 5. OK, so that was question C. And then question D says x minus 3 over 4 equals 5. Well, as usual, I'd like to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to get rid of the fraction just by multiplying by 4 so that I only have the top of the fraction. But I've got to multiply by 4 the other side as well. So multiplying by 4 to get rid of the fraction, you get x minus 3 equals 20. But I don't want to know what x minus 3 is. I want to know what x is on its own. So I get rid of the minus 3 by adding 3. And then I've got to add 3 to the other side as well. So adding 3 to both sides, x equals 23. Um, and on to question E. So question E says x over 2 equals minus 4. I don't want to know what x over 2 is. I want to know what a whole x is. I need to multiply by 2 to get rid of the dividing by 2. Um, so multiplying both sides by 2, x equals minus 8. Moving on, I'm not even taking the time to underline these, am I, which is uh, very poor. 3 times x minus 6 equals 0. So to get the bracket on its own, the x minus 6, which now that it's on its own doesn't really need the brackets. Um, so to get the x minus 6 on its own, you need to divide by 3. 0 divided by 3 is still 0. So dividing everything by 3, x minus 6 equals 0. But I don't want to know what x minus 6 is. I want to know what x is on its own. So I need to get rid of the minus 6. I get rid of a minus 6 by adding 6. So adding 6 to both sides, x equals 6. Moving on, where am I up to? Um, I'm up to g now. g uh, says x over 3 plus 2 equals minus 1. So I'm going to get rid of the 2 to get closer to the bit with x in. So taking away 2 from both sides, I get the x plus 3 on its own equals minus 3. Now I want to know what a whole x is, so to get a whole x I need to get rid of the over 3 fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 3 both sides to get rid of the fraction. And when I multiply both sides by 3, I get x equals minus 9. 
OK, on to question H. 3x plus 7 equals minus 5. I'm going to take away 7 from both sides to get the 3x bit on its own. So taking away 7, 3x equals minus 12. Then I'm going to divide everything by 3 to get the x on its own. So dividing both sides by 3, x equals minus 4. Moving on to the next one. x plus 1 over 3 equals minus 2. OK, so to get rid of the fraction, I'm going to multiply by 3 so that I'll just have the x plus 1 that's on the top. But I need to do the same on the right as well. So multiplying both sides by 3, I get x plus 1 equals minus 6. I want x on its own. I'm going to take away 1 from both sides, and that gives me x equals minus 7. OK, moving on to question J now. 4x minus 6 equals 14. I want to get rid of the minus 6 to give me 4x on its own. So I'm going to add 6 to cancel it out. So adding 6 to both sides, 4x equals 20. And to get a single x on its own, I'm going to divide by 4. So dividing both sides by 4, x equals 5. OK, x plus 4 over minus 5 equals 2. I'm going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying by minus 5 so that I just get the x plus 4 that's on the top. So multiplying both sides by minus 5, x plus 4 equals minus 10. 2 times minus 5 makes minus 10. I want the x on its own, so I need to take away the 4. So taking away 4 from both sides, x equals 14. OK, so that was um, K. So moving on to L now, which says 2 brackets x plus 7 equals 14. So I'm going to get the x plus 7 bit on its own by dividing by 2, but then I need to divide the other bit by 2 as well. So x plus 7 uh, equals 7, and then <coughs> taking away 7 from both sides, get the x on its own, x equals 0. OK, moving on. x plus 2 over 4 equals minus a half. So I'd like to get rid of the, the fraction dividing by 4. So I'm going to get rid of it by multiplying by 4, and then it cancels out the division. But then I need to multiply the other side by 4 as well. So minus 4 over 2 and then instead of minus 1 over 2. But minus 4 over 2 is just the same as minus 2. So I've got x plus 2 equals minus 2. I'll just write that x plus 2 a little bit bigger. x plus 2 equals minus 2. I like the x on its own, so I'm going to take away the 2. So taking away 2 from both sides, I get x equals minus 4. OK, on to question N. 3x plus 15 equals 0. I would like the bit with the x on its own, so I need to take away the 15. Taking away 15 from both sides, I get 3x equals minus 15. And then I don't want to know what 3x's are. I want to know what x is on its own. So I'm going to divide by 3. So dividing both sides by 3, x equals minus 5. OK, on to question O. 9 times this bracket that's got x minus 2 in it equals minus 63. I'd quite like the bracket on its own, the x minus 2 on its own, so I'm going to divide by 9 to get it on its own. So I've got to divide by 9 both sides, so dividing both sides by 9, I get x minus 2 equals minus 7 because minus 63 divided by 9 is minus 7. But I'd like the x on its own, so I need to get rid of the minus 2. So I need to add 2 to both sides. So adding 2 to both sides, x equals minus 5. OK, on to question P. 
x minus 11 over minus 2 equals 8. So again, I want to get rid of the fraction. I'm going to multiply everything by minus 2 to get rid of the fraction and just have the top bit, x minus 11. So multiplying both sides by minus 2, I get x minus 11 equals minus 16, because 8 times minus 2 makes minus 16. So x minus 11 equals minus 16. I'd like the x on its own, so I want to get rid of the minus 11. I'll get rid of that by adding 11 to both sides. So adding to 11 to both sides, I get x equals minus 5. On to question Q. Nearly at the end, two more. 6 brackets x plus 1 equals minus 54. I'd quite like to get the x plus 1 that's in the brackets on its own, so I'm going to divide by 6. Dividing both sides by 6, I get x plus 1 equals minus 9, because minus 54 divided by 6 gives you minus 9. But I don't want to know what x plus 1 is. I want to know what x is on its own, so I need to take away the 1. Taking away 1 from both sides gives you x equals minus 10. And the final question in this block, question R, x over 5 minus 1 equals 7. So I quite like the bit with x on its own, so I want to get rid of the minus 1. So I'm going to add 1 to get rid of the minus 1, and it disappears. But I've got to add 1 the other side as well. So x over 5 equals 8 when we add 1 to both sides. But I don't want to know what x over 5 is. I want to know what a whole x is on its own. So I need to multiply everything by 5, and that gives me x equals 40.